digital painting is great fun. You can get some terrific effects. You can make your own brushes with Adobe Sketch. Here are some of the different paint brushes I've made with Adobe Sketch. Lots of different textures and colors. Hi, I'm Paula O'Brien. We're going to talk today about making new brushes in Adobe Photoshop Sketch digital painting app. It's available for Android and Apple devices. You can use it with an Apple Pencil, of course your fingers, or an inexpensive rubber tipped stylus. Let's use this stylus. We're going to make some new brushes. Let's open the app. Let's start with a new canvas. New canvas. Let's use this format because it matches our screen here. So I'm going to select my brushes, which are over here on the left hand side. Doesn't matter which one you pick because we're going to add a new one. So I pick that one. I'm going to add a new brush. Now I'm not on Creative Cloud. I don't pay anything extra to use this app. The app is free. I already have the iPad. I already have some kind of a stylus. I'm not paying for anything extra. So it's a very inexpensive way to get started. So first of all, you create the, the new brush in something called Capture. And it's going to add it to my library. Now I have my iPad set up here in front of a book to photograph. Normally I'd be out in the real world to photograph something, but here it is in front of the camera. It's a book by Carol Marine on painting. So it's got some of her lovely tomatoes. And I'm just going to take a picture. And let's start with this. This brush is looking at this photograph. So if I stretch this out, different ways, it adjusts what's being seen in this brush style. Less red, more red, less, you can see I'm, I'm moving it around. Let's go with this. That's called crop. So we can crop that. Style is, a, is the last style I used. It's a long stretch version. There's different kinds. black and white, etc. Let's just go back to the first one, nice and big. In the settings, we can play with the size, the flow, RGB or black and white, linear, mirror, or stretch. Pressure is how much it uh, responds to pressure of your stylus and the flow. These are things you have to play with. Velocity, again, speed of your mark making. These are things you have to play with. Uh, noise, it's different kind of scratchiness in there. Fade, fades out the ends. Or taper, gives it a bit of an unusual pointy tip. I don't usually like that one, but sometimes it's useful. But I'll, I'll pick the fade. That's quite attractive. And if I go back into here, I can refine this even more. I can minus, I can take something away, and it adds these white marks. Or I can plus, I can put that back. I can saturate or desaturate this photo to affect that line as well. Let's say I like this one. Let's save this brush. Now it's here ready to use. Here's what it looks like. That's its full size. You might want to make it quite skinny. It might be quite cute. You can change its color. That's its color straight out of the box in this gray. But if we take it into a different color, make it bigger. It has some different aspects. And here's transparency. Very transparent, very opaque. So if we take it down to very transparent, it could be quite interesting. Where does this brush live? If we hold this down again, it brings us to my library of brushes. There's two libraries, the sketch brushes that come with Adobe Sketch. Standard issue. And my library of things that I've created in Creative Capture. Eventually, just like in the organization of files, eventually these are just called brush one, brush two, brush three, doesn't make much sense, and how do you find them? So I've named them some more interesting things. 
This is how you organize them. It's in Adobe Capture. It should be coming in here someplace. Oh, here, just came in here. It had to arrive. Brush one. Let's just go in and look at it. Here's what it looks like. Here's the image it came from. Rename. Let's rename this. Carol Marine Tomato. That's what I had brought it from. And if I go back to my library, that brush will move down to alphabetical listing. Let's take a look at some of these brushes I've made and the brushes that you can make. Here's what it's going to look like. Here's the image. I was chatting with somebody in transit and she had this lovely little watercolor palette and we started talking about plein air sketching and we chatted for the whole hour's commute. I was showing her things on the iPad, she was showing me things in her sketchbook and I managed to make this, capture this little brush here. So that's what that looks like. You can take pictures of all kinds of things. Just blurry things, just images of light and dark, which eventually might be a great texture someplace. This is a fork, and the light shining on it, and the light on the edge of the knife. Who would know that this is what it's from? And I just organized those in sort of tonality, and just brushed 306, 307, just sort of grouping those kind of burnt, umber tone brushes together. Here's another cute one. This is from my fence at my house. It's painted all those different colors. This is a cute one that drops drops of color. This is where it starts. This is how it moves around. This is a picture of the side of my purse with a cute little print on it. I named it Marble Swirl because that to me is what it looks like. Pink flowers. These are beautiful pink flowers from my garden. So you can create all kinds of drawing brushes that will be totally unique to your artwork. Sticky notes beside my computer, just like the colorways. And then sure enough, when I stretched it out, it was pretty interesting. This is a picture of my foot in a running shoe. I just saw it one day and I was playing with the camera and it makes quite an interesting line. Here's the one that I call rest. I'm very fond of this one. This is just light shining on a texture. But when I use it in a rust color, it looks like a little piece of rusty wood. Here's another nice one, twig basket. A lovely graded woody tone. It was a photograph of a twig basket on my deck. Here's one of my favorites. I call it turquoise stripe. It was a little wooden trivet, again, on my deck. I was just looking at textures. Quite interesting. All of this is available on your phone, too. If you're out in the world and just using your phone and not an iPad, it's all available there to you, too. In Adobe Capture, you can make brushes on your phone the same way. So why would you make your own brushes? Here's one, for instance. Now, be careful when you open your drawing within the program. You're actually on the screen that you can affect the drawing. If you want to just look at a drawing, it's much better to export this and look at it into photos, because if I touch this here, I will be really drawing on it. So let's be careful. But if I play the replay of this image, I can see all the different textured brushes that I use to make it. Watercolor behind, sketchy little marker on top, scratchy things here, pastel line there, chalk marker here, Again, different layers, little marker on top, blobby watercolor bits here. Here's one, for example, that I used one of my own unique brushes on. No one else is going to have mark like this. This little black and white dotted mark, that's one of my brushes. When I make these marks, they're totally unique to my imagery. That's one of the big differences between using Adobe Photoshop Sketch and Procreate. 
Procreate, you can make brushes, but they're all like textured brushes that don't bring in these other visual elements. They're more like a different type of paintbrush that's a physical thing, but not these colorful elements that you can make in Adobe Sketch. Adobe Sketch is a little bit more of a drawing program, and Procreate's a bit more of a painting program, but they're both fantastic programs. Adobe Sketch works on across all devices and is free. Procreate's about $10 and only works on Apple devices, as so does Brushes Redux. I'm sure there's lots of good painting programs for Android devices, but I'm not familiar with them. These are the three I'm familiar with. Brushes Redux, Adobe Sketch, and Procreate. Whatever you start with, they're all great, and whatever you learn in one, you'll be able to transfer to another. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying your digital painting. Take it outside and have some fun today.